Welcome to the Murray County Central's Veterans Day program. We are here today to honor our veterans who have served our country in the Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. It is my privilege to emcee this event with my colleague, Mr. Jacob Scandrit. Although we will never be able to repay our debt of gratitude for the sacrifices you've made in order to maintain our freedoms, we offer this tribute in appreciation for all that you have done. Thanks also to everybody that has submitted photos for our slideshow. Please join me in a moment of silence for those veterans no longer with us. Thank you. Now we will have our national anthem presented by the Murray County Central Band. The Murray County Central Band is under the direction of Mr. Mike Helgeson. County Central Choir under the direction of Mrs. Chrissy Gergen and accompanied by Mr. Dane Bowes on piano, Mrs. Teresa Nisabolt on cello, and Mrs. Mary Beach reading, share with us, give me your tired, your poor. The MCC Concert Choir is going to sing for you, give me your tired, your poor. The words are from a poem, The New Colossus, words by Emma Lazarus. The music is by Irving Berlin. stride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beckoned hand blows worldwide welcome, her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that Twin Cities frame. 
Keep ancient land, your stored pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your humbled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuge of your teeming shore. It is my privilege to introduce my colleague and elementary principal, Mr. Todd Burlingame. Specialist Burlingame served in the Army on active duty for two and a half years and with the Army Reserve for three and a half years. Mr. Burlingame, a native of Camby, was active in many sports throughout his high school career. His wrestling record actually awarded him a scholarship at Worthington Community College. After an injury sidelined him for a season, he encountered a recruiter who told him all about the benefits of serving his country. Admittedly, the major enticement was a chance to have his college tuition paid for after his service. This opportunity led Todd to enlist in the Army in February 1984. As an E3 with one year of college under his belt, he was nicknamed College Boy by his drill sergeants. Let us welcome Mr. Burlingame as he tells us the rest of the story. I'm honored to be the, key, the keynote speaker for MCC's Veterans Day program. Although my tenure with the military was short, the impact of my years in the service have proven to be invaluable to me. As a native of Canby, I enjoy participating in sports. I ran cross country in the fall to get in shape for wrestling. In the spring, there was baseball and golf to keep me disciplined. Looking back, I'm sure that I was voted least likely to join the service in my high school yearbook. I enrolled in Worthington Community College looking forward to the challenge of wrestling at the next level. In the spring of my freshman year, while watching TV with a buddy, a Be All You Can Be commercial came on. I looked at my buddy and said, yeah, right, me in the Army? I don't think so. Well, after reviewing my financial situation and the college tuition for the upcoming year, I found myself in the Army recruiter's office the following week, the following week along with that same buddy. We both signed up for the Army two-year college program. They started my college fund 
with an $8,000 signing bonus. While in the service, I put $100 in my college fund each month and Uncle Sam put in $200. I had over $15,000 in my college fund once I left active duty service. My Army career began in Fort Jackson, South Carolina with basic training. I relate this to entering kindergarten. The Army taught me how to dress, follow directions, and memorize my smart book. I was told when to get up, when to sleep, when to eat, and when to exercise. I learned how to sing cadence while marching in a straight line with the old left, right, left, right. GI parties were frequently held to maintain cleanliness. My kindergarten teachers, also known as drill sergeants, taught me everything I needed to know about being a soldier in the United States Army. Discipline was reinforced through respect, responsibility, readiness, similar to the three R's we teach in school today. Here's a quick note on the college boy story. The first day of basic training, after getting our new wardrobe and the high and tight haircut, the drill sergeant asked me how I got my E3 rank. I explained that my year of college education credited me with an additional rank, so I was able to start my Army career as an E3. Apparently, this was not a good answer. The drill sergeant asked me rather loudly, do you think you're smarter than me? I respectfully replied, no drill sergeant. Well, the remainder of basic training, I was called college boy and they loved me. I was in the best shape of my life and they frequently told me on a daily basis, drop and give me 20 college boy. My journey then took me to Fort Lee, Virginia for my AIT or advanced individual training. As a 76 whiskey, I was trained to work in supply. I feel like I was in junior high with a little more freedom than elementary, but still having to follow a rigorous schedule. Each day began with PT or physical training by running several miles. We gobbled down our breakfast, then off to class. Once again, the drill sergeants were the smartest ones in the room, just like your teachers. I studied and learned how to carry out my mission with the utmost respect, responsibility, pride, and honor. After graduation from AIT, I was stationed in Fort Hood, Texas. As a 76 Whiskey in the 2nd Armored Division, I ran a POL, Petroleum, Oil, and Lubricants Warehouse, maintaining enough inventory to supply many units on what was then the largest Army base in the U.S. After two and a half years of active duty, I finished my military stint in the Army Reserves in Marshall, Minnesota, while attending SMSU for elementary education. I graduated from college with very low student debt, thanks to the Army College Fund and the Army Reserve income. Serving your country is an honor and an opportunity of a lifetime. Although my enlistment limited me to travels in the States, I got to see many different places of our great country. As a high school senior, unsure of what his future held, the military was a great option for me. I spread my wings as I lived in the barracks and served with people from all walks of life and diverse backgrounds. Even though I was voted least likely to succeed as a soldier, I take great pride in this period of my life. Military service was part of my family. I remember Grandpa Harold talking about his life as a CB while serving in the Navy during World War II. He used the skills he learned in his construction unit to support his family for the rest of his life. My uncle Denny made a career out of his service in the, military, in the Army. He served three tours in Vietnam and was able to retire after 20 years with full military retirement. 
My mom's sister, Colleen, served, as an, served in the Navy as part of the WAVES, or Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service during World War II. During her stint in California, she met the, the, the Navy soldier of her dreams. Unfortunately, these family members are no longer with us. I sure would have enjoyed talking to them now while trying to write this speech. If you know anyone who has served in the military, I would encourage you to thank them for their service and let them know you share their patriotism and would like to hear their stories of their time in uniform. Today's military looks a lot different than it did 35 years ago. Although the sacrifices that a soldier and their families make are tremendous and enlistment comes with a lot of risk, there are many benefits to the military life. Many professionals that you encounter on a daily basis have served in the military, perhaps earning their degrees as a doctor, nurse, dentist, lawyer. Thanks again for this opportunity to share my military story with you. Thanks to all those who have served and may you enjoy this special day as we honor you. Thank you. Thank you, Specialist Sperling Game, for sharing with us today. Now please welcome the high school band as they perform traditional songs and anthems from each branch of service under the direction of Mr. Mike Helgeson.
We will now have the Rebel Voices, under the direction of Mrs. Christy Gergen and accompanied by Mr. Dane Bowes, lead us in God Bless America. Today is a day we take time to remember our veterans who continue to serve and those who have served in the past. Our freedoms, heritage, the way of life we enjoy today are made possible because of our military veterans. Today, Veterans Day honors all of America's veterans for their patriotism, service, and sacrifice. And for their families, there's no better time than now to recognize them and give thanks for the remarkable sacrifices they have made. November is Military Family Month. Behind our brave servicemen and women, there are family members and loved ones who share in their sacrifice and provide unending support. In recognition of the military families, each year the President of the United States signs a proclamation declaring November to be Military Family Month. This annual proclamation marks the beginning of a month-long celebration of the military family in which we honor the commitment and sacrifices made by the families of the nation's service members. Please remember all the airmen, soldiers, marines, and sailors who continue to serve in harm's way. Keep them and their families in your thoughts and prayers. I would like to give a special thanks to Mr. Isaac Harms for putting this video together for us. Although we would have preferred to honor our veterans in person today, we chose to do this virtual to protect our veterans, students, staff, and community members. This is a small sacrifice in comparison to all that our veterans have endured. Veterans, this is your day. We thank you for our freedoms. We hope you enjoyed this virtual tribute. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you.